I recently learned how X-ray telescopes work, and to be honest with you, it's not at all like I thought. Well, I'd never really thought about it too much, but if you'd asked me about it, I would have got it totally wrong. So I thought it would be fun to share with you today how they actually do work. Most traditional reflector telescopes work by having a big concave primary mirror that focuses the light it collects onto a smaller convex secondary mirror. And this secondary mirror further focuses the light into the interior of the telescope. The bigger the primary mirror, the higher the resolution of the image that that telescope produces. The interior of the telescope will then contain all of the actual detectors that measure the intensity of the light or count individual photons. But it might also have some more mirrors too that do some more focusing and redirection inside the telescope. This is how telescopes work if they're detecting radio, infrared, visible or even ultraviolet light. But for X-ray telescopes, it doesn't work. This is because X-rays have such high energies that they usually pass through most objects including mirrors. The other types of light I just mentioned, radio through UV, have lower energies than X-rays. You can think of X-rays as having such a short wavelength that they pass right through the materials that make up the mirrors. Instead, X-ray telescopes do something a little more subtle in order to focus the high energy light they're looking for onto their detectors. First of all, X-ray telescopes have to be in space because the atmosphere absorbs X-rays. If your telescope was on Earth, it wouldn't see anything at all the atmosphere above it is totally opaque to X-ray light. As a result, all of the best X-ray telescopes are space telescopes. And the one we'll look at here as an example is called the Chandra telescope, named for the famous astrophysicist Chandrasekhar. And I think it's fair to say that currently, this is the best X-ray telescope around. It orbits the Earth in an elliptical orbit, avoiding the patches around the Earth that have the most radiation that would cause noise and interference and other issues with its instruments. Other space X-ray telescopes include the Apollo telescope mount on the Skylab space station, ESA's Exosat and ROSAT, a collaboration between the UK, US and Germany. Chandra works not by having a huge mirror to collect loads of photons, but rather it has a series of mirrors, all at shallow angles that are perfect for subtly redirecting the X-ray photons. These mirrors are almost perpendicular to the path of incoming light. While the X-rays would pass through the mirror if they hit it straight on, here, they actually glance off the mirror just enough to be focused into the detectors on board. On Chandra, there are four pairs of concentric, thin-walled mirrors, nested like you can hopefully see here. Together, they make up the so-called High Resolution Mirror Assembly, or HRMA. Light enters through one of the gaps here at the front of the telescope, and photons need to bounce off the two mirrors in the pair in order to be focused into the detector on board Chandra. The first mirror in each pair is slightly parabolic, and the second mirror in each pair is slightly hyperbolic. This is needed in order to focus the light correctly into a coherent image. Just like traditional mirrors have one concave and one convex mirror. Each of the eight mirrors on board Chandra are made from fancy glass, which is highly polished and then coated in chromium and iridium. The positioning of these mirrors, kind of like an onion, does leave a large hole in the center of the telescope where the traditional mirror would have been. And hence, many X-rays are missed in these designs. This effect is limited by the concentric nesting of the mirrors. But on Chandra, we only have four sets of mirrors, so it's still not perfect. The more sets of mirrors you can nest, the better your X-ray telescope will be. For example, the XMM Newton X-ray Observatory has 58 mirrors, so it will miss many fewer X-rays than Chandra, and it looks even more like an onion. Each pair of mirrors on Chandra is optimized to reflect a slightly different wavelength of X-ray light, and the total area of all the mirrors in the HRMA is around 1100 square centimeters. The struts that hold some of these mirrors in place obscure about 10% of that collecting area though. Once the X-rays have bounced off two mirrors, they travel down an almost eight meter tunnel to reach the instruments and detectors. It's kind of interesting to note that the original design plans for Chandra had six pairs of mirrors instead of four but pairs two and five were eliminated for the final assembly. That said, the pairs of mirrors on Chandra are still numbered from the outmost pair inwards as one, three, four, and six, as they were in the original plans. The glancing technique that Chandra uses results in very high resolution images and also very high telescope sensitivity with a very high signal to noise ratio. The main limitation of a telescope that works with these grazing mirrors is that they end up with a much narrower field of view than traditional reflecting telescopes looking for visible or UV light. There are then devices called gratings that can be placed in the path of the light in between the mirrors and the instruments. These contain thousands of narrow gaps that segregate the X-rays according to their wavelength. This helps because the intensity of the radiation at each wavelength or energy tells us about the different chemical elements in the objects that Chandra is looking at. 
and it also tells us about the temperature, density, and motion of the object as well. The primary instrument on board Chandra then records the position of every X-ray that hits it, and it records the energy of that photon too. And we can then use this to build the images that Chandra produces. So, what kinds of things does Chandra look at? Well, mostly things that tend to be bright in the X-ray wavelengths of light, which are often very hot and energetic objects. This includes things like supernovae, the explosive death of stars, and old supernova remnants on the sky too. Chandra targets also include black holes, particularly supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies that are consuming a lot of matter. This infalling matter tends to heat up and emit a lot of radiation, including lots of X-rays. And these active black holes are known as quasars. Other targets include star-forming regions of space, merging galaxy clusters, planets in our own solar system, nebulae and pulsars. Each of the images I'm showing now are composite images, which combine X-ray data from Chandra with data from other telescopes to show many more details of each object. We can see that the X-ray data provides a lot of information that isn't seen in the other data and gives us a fuller picture of the universe. Chandra was also integral to observing the electromagnetic counterpart to GW170817, a gravitational wave event caused by two merging neutron stars. And this allowed us to study what happened in the aftermath of the merger, including seeing what elements were produced. So be honest with me, did you know this is how X-ray telescopes work? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe if you're new and you enjoyed this content. Also, let me know if you'd be interested in a similar video looking at how gamma ray telescopes work, because they're different once again. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye. I recently learned how X-ray telescopes